Hey guys, how's it going? So today's project is basically trying to get as much as I can get done and planted in a couple hours. You coming with me, bud? Oh, you are a superhero. Excellent. Oh, you gotta go to the chickens? Yes, and see them, see what they're doing. You gotta see what they're doing. That's important, buddy. Would you like some help? Oh, you got it. Yeah, I it. Sure thing. Is that your Superman cape? Good job, babe. Anyway, I've got a couple hours to get some things planted and I still haven't uh, put any corn or beans or tomatoes in the ground. So I'm hoping to get that done. Also hoping to get my sweet potato starts planted because I've had those sitting on our kitchen counter in a cup wrapped in a wet paper towel for the past three weeks. They're starting to languish. I think they look better than last year's though. And last year's sweet potato crop was a total bust, but I'm gonna try it again this year. In fact, I think I'm gonna put them in the raspberry bed where I don't have like the empty one. I only have a few starts of fall gold, which I'm gonna plant today too and then we'll fill up the rest of it with sweet potatoes and hope for the best what'd you get I got, I got some eggs. you got some eggs the excitement over eggs is real <laughs> okay so this is what the back of the gator looks like right now i did want to give you guys an update on my tomato plants that i started oh what the first of april and i had some of you with your eyebrows raised wondering if that was going to be too late but it really isn't um you know when you can't really plant your tomatoes out safely until may at some point they only need about six weeks in order to grow and be ready to come outside. Um, I did plant one of these in a friend's garden. This was the Husky Cherry Tomato, so it's missing one, but the rest of them are looking really good. Um, I'm going to be planting some Garden Treasure and Garden Gem tomatoes in our raised beds up closer to the house. And um, then the rest of these, I think I'm gonna put out in the new property. I swore I wouldn't plant 30 tomatoes ever again, but I don't know. You know, this time of year, we just get carried away. I've got some seeds here. I've got my ambrosia corn right there. We've got jade bush beans, and then I've got some of the bulk sunflowers from down at the garden center. And then I've got a whole bunch of like uh, florist type sunflowers, like the pro cuts and some other random varieties there. I also have some drip supplies for the second raspberry bed where I'm gonna put the sweet potatoes and the drip tubing here fertilizer compost i think we've got everything i even have tags like plant id tags and my marker i think i'm ready i think we'll go ahead and start with these tomatoes and the jade beans in the raised beds near the house So this is what I do when I'm getting ready to plant tomatoes. This is the Garden Gem. It's like aroma type snacker tomato. They're really tasty. In fact, I think this one was my favorite flavor wise last year out of all of the ones I grew. Um, but I prep my area. So compost, a little bit of starter fertilizer, irrigation is in place. There's a little bit more irrigation in here than necessary for two tomato plants, but I think I might use the space, utilize it and underplant the tomatoes with something. Just haven't decided yet. You can see everything else going on in the garden right now. It's a really great time. Everything's looking good. Uh, but to prep my tomato plant, you see all of these lower branches right here. I don't necessarily want any branches to be touching the soil because that can cause some uh, disease issues. So right from the gate, I'm gonna cut these lower leaves off just like this. Kind of clean up the bottom of that plant. There's still quite a bit of growth there. And when I go to plant, I'll actually bury this deeper than it currently is because it will create more uh, roots right along the stem and it'll create a stronger plant. So when I go in, I'm going to make my hole deeper than the container that the tomato is in. I'll do that quick. One could use a shovel <laughs> or your hand, <laughs> whatever. And I'll slide the tomato out of its plant can and pop it down in the hole. I kind of hold the leaves up so you can see as I backfill around this, the soil will go up around that stem a bit. So that's perfect. Right now there are no leaves touching the soil. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch this sucker out. This is a new branch that's forming between the main branch and this side branch right here, just so the plant can focus its energy on rooting for a little bit. And that looks really great.
So tomatoes are done. We've got two garden treasures right there, which are a slicer type. And two garden gems right here, which I'm one tomato cage short. These are called sturdy cages. And I want all the frames that I use in here to match. So I'm gonna run down to the garden center and get a fourth one. I have all the Titan tomato cages from last year still in the barn, but I think I'm gonna use those all out on the new property for the rest of the tomatoes. And I've got this one last bed in here, three by six, that I'm gonna plant green beans in. And I think I'll just go ahead and plant four rows because we've got four lines of drip tubing. I'll add a little bit of starter fertilizer. This one recently had compost added to it, so I'm not going to add any of that today. I don't think it needs it. And make trenches about a half inch deep. There's bean seeds. We're gonna put two bean seeds about every three inches or so. That looks really good. I may have to tack down the uh, drip line so that it stays put along each row. And just in case you're wondering why my bean seeds are pink, some of the time I get bean seeds that have been treated with a fungicide like this one and sometimes I don't, but a lot of bean seeds and pea seeds are treated with a fungicide which helps with fungal issues. It helps uh, keep them from rotting and damping off after they've germinated. So anyway, just in case you were wondering. So now I just need to cover these back over with soil and water everything in in here and then we can move out to where I wanna plant the sweet potatoes. Gotta go grab my sweet potatoes real quick. Got my sweet potatoes and got my ice water. We're good to go. We need to run and get our raspberries at the high tunnels real quick too. Oh, you know what, real quick, I need to show you guys some roses. I've had these since last year and they are the most gorgeous roses ever. I'm kind of glad that I didn't plant them so that just in case they ended up in a spot where I needed to remove them for one of our many projects going on right now. But this one's called Cream Veranda. Isn't that gorgeous? And then this one is called All Dressed Up. Then I think this one might be my favorite. I don't know that Cream Veranda is beautiful too, but look at this. Princess Charlene de Monaco. So that's a newer bloom and they age out beautifully. And the scent, you guys, is crazy amazing. Oh, it smells so good. And then I recently showed this tree right here, either in my Instagram stories or maybe I posted a little video to my main page. I can't really remember, but it's a Caroline Sweetheart Redbud. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm actually glad it's a little breezy so you can see what kind of movement it has. It just looks so fluttery. And the reason why I have it out here still is because I don't think it will survive the conditions just planted like plunked out in the middle of nowhere. It might, I might not be giving it enough credit. It may be really tough, but I'm thinking of putting this in the main garden where it can find a little bit of shelter from some other things. I just haven't decided quite where. I want it somewhere where I can see it all the time. It does get quite large still though. So here's the tag, Caroline's Sweetheart, Eastern Redbud. 20 to 30 feet tall by 30 feet wide. That's a big tree, zone six through nine. And red buds do really well in our area, typically, so long as they get enough water. This isn't as pretty, but those are my fall gold raspberries right here. I also have out here four blackberries that are starting to bud up, getting ready to bloom, and I have a fig as well, Chicago hardy fig. I think I'll probably put that in a pot. Anyway, lots of fun stuff out here. Oh. And my peony, look at this. <gasps> oh. A tour through the high tunnels might be in order at some point. There's some really fun stuff in here. You know, a lot of plants for projects that we do, um, but then I also, like as I see things at the garden center that I just love, I'll pick them up and put them out here. Um, so they're a little bit protected while they wait until I have a chance to plant them out in the garden somewhere. But got our raspberries, that's what we were after. I got these bare root this spring. It looks like one of them didn't survive. Oh no, there's roots on it still. Like good looking roots, I might just plant it and see what happens. So here we are at the raspberry beds. This project was a total bonus this year. I didn't actually think we would get this done. So it's so fun that we have one bed completely full. When I bought these fall golds, it was all I could get my hands on. All the growers were sold out. So uh, I figured I would just be planting these in a pot and we'd get a few berries off of them. And then next spring I could plant them out once we built these. 
Um, but since they're here, may as well put these where they're destined to go anyway, and then we'll just fill up the rest of the bed with the sweet potatoes. And it's nice, lofty, loose raised bed mix, so the sweet potatoes will probably have an easy time growing, I'm hoping. I do need to run drip in this bed before I plant, so there's the water access tube. We showed you in this video how we ran it. I'm gonna run it exactly the same way so that it's prepared for the raspberries, these poor things. It's already been really windy since we planted them. They just need a minute to root in and they'll be fine, but it's always kind of hard to see that in the beginning. Okay, so I'm gonna run the irrigation, put some biotone down, we'll get the fall golds in the ground, and then the sweet potatoes. The blackberries, I actually think I'm gonna plant those, I'm not really sure. I was gonna plant them in those big galvanized troughs that we have the alliums in right now, but now I'm thinking for longevity, I should probably fashion something similar to this, but I don't want to give away any of my fall gold space because I actually like those raspberries better than heritage. So I want to make sure to have like a full row of those. Um, we do have enough lumber to build one more three by 30 raised bed. That's the size of these. And I intended on doing that 100% strawberries, but maybe I'll do like the back half of it blackberries and the front half of it strawberries. In which case we'll need to put up another structure like this right here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hurry through this so that we can maybe get some corn in the ground. That was really the goal. I don't need to get any flowers in the ground today. If I could just get the corn done and this bed done, I will be so happy. From the three I bought this spring, there's the one that didn't produce any green growth, but there were healthy looking roots and I could see a growth point. So I'm hopeful that that one takes off, but I was able to separate the other two into four plants already, <laughs> which means that we're gonna fill this bed pretty quick. So I am going to start the sweet potatoes on the far end and just come down as far as they do. I'm not sure how many slips are viable in that little bunch that I've got. And then if I happen to be able to separate these anymore this year or if I get some out of my parents house that have grown outside of their raspberry boxes then I can continue filling this bed up. I think there's supposed to be 25 slips in this bundle. Not real sure. The variety is Georgia Jet. The roots look good. Last year the ones I planted were black so that's probably why I didn't get very many. They had already rotted. Twenty six slips right there that all look pretty darn good. So in terms of spacing, typically I think you go anywhere from 10 to 18 inches, but since our emitter holes are every 18 inches, I'm going to go ahead and space them that far. That way I know I have water right to the plant because these tend to be kind of water babies. They're kind of like the ornamental sweet potato vines we use in our pots that always utilize so much water. These are kind of the same way. Sweet potatoes are in and they went about halfway. So they stopped just beyond the halfway mark. And that dry space in between, like right here and right over there, is extra space for raspberries should I get a hold of any more plants. Uh, everything has been watered in. I always water in by hand and I like to do the whole area around the plant just to make sure everything has settled in nicely. Uh, and a little bit of information on these Georgia Jets. They're really popular variety. And you can grow them in like a 20 or 25 gallon tub, I think would be a really good size. Um, they've got really dark orange uh, insides that are really sweet, really good for eating. And they've got a 100 day maturity. And I'm hoping with how light this raised bed mix is, look at this. Like if I were a potato, this is what I would wanna grow in because you would be able to form really nice big potatoes instead of having to fight through really dense soil. So I think, I think this will be good. Good use of the space anyway. I hated to just leave it empty for the whole year. Seems a shame. So I'm happy about this. So now we're gonna head to this part of the garden to plant our corn. 
The corn is gonna be planted right here at the end of these two rows. It's just gonna go 16 feet down each row and I'm gonna plant three rows instead of four. So I'm not gonna go one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna go one, two, three because I think I wanna leave this space a little bit wider because these sweet peas will get bigger and the corn is pretty big too. So I'll go one, two, three and then one, two, three which is three, six times 16, how much is that? And these sweet peas have been such troopers, they're just now starting to kind of thicken up and start to put on a tiny bit of growth. They actually produced for a good part of our season last year, even through the first part of the heat. So I'm hopeful we'll get some blooms, but right after I was done planting these, you can actually see the original stem like right here. They were beautiful and then it proceeded to be the most windy couple of days I think we've had here in a while and it just beat them all up. So all of these plants have had to re-sprout either from the roots or from somewhere along this poor tattered stem. So anyway, I mean it kind of goes to show how tough plants are as long as you're patient. I was kind of hoping to see these, you know, covering a good part of the fence by now, but it's just, you know, it happens. It's just the way it goes. We can't control the weather. We just do what we can to keep them happy when they're in the ground. All right, so I'm just gonna make little trenches and put my ambrosia corn seed, which is a bicolor yellow and white corn, in the ground about four to six inch spacing between each grouping of two seeds, and then I'll thin later. And the reason we're going 16 feet down each row is because I can put a 16 foot ranch panel up as a staking system for the corn. We ended up having to do that last year. After the corn was huge and gorgeous, we had a huge windstorm and it blew a lot of it over. So I tried to like lash it. I put some T-posts in, um, put a ranch panel up and tried to lash the corn up to that ranch panel as best as possible. So I think I'm just gonna pre-stake it. Um, so I'll plant it today. We'll get the staking system up after the corn, you know, has come up a little bit. And then um, as it grows, we'll just kind of have a big piece of twine around the whole group of them. Um, so it can kind of help hold them upright because I just don't want that to happen again. And then we're coming in with sunflowers, um, like I said, in these rows and amaranth and a few other taller things. So anyway, let's get this corn in the ground. I need to go grab some compost though first. Corn seed is planted, watered in. I just leave the hose right where it sits. In fact, it's just kind of like permanently out this time of year because I have so many random things going on in here. And I can't 100% count on the drip tape until things have rooted in and can draw in the water because like in some rows, I'm planting right in the center. And you have to hand water that stuff because the water sometimes isn't, isn't reaching the seed exactly. So I just like the peace of mind of hand watering until things are up and going. Even though this drip is going every day, now the other day after i planted my peppers right there i forgot to turn on the valves so at the beginning of each run of drip tape you can see i've got these on off valves so you can turn them off like that or you can have them on well i thought that the water had gone off and it did <laughs> i just had forgotten to turn on the valve so all my peppers well a good portion of them were all wilted thankfully i caught it in time and they're okay here comes benjamin he just kind of comes and goes. I know Aaron is treating some trees uh, for iron deficiency. He's doing a foliar application today to try that out. Anyway, hey bud. Hi. How you doing? Anyway, we'll soon put up a staking system like this on each row, just on this side of each row. Um, and then we can lash the corn stalks up and we won't have the whole toppling over problem. And then I'm gonna do the rest of the tall stuff. So sunflowers and amaranth here. Um, much smaller selection of both of them. I kind of weeded out some of the varieties that I don't really want to grow all too much. Hey, Hi. I love you. Hi. Those fit pretty nicely. Are they comfy? Yeah. I bet it feels a little weird, huh, to have something between your toes for the first time. Does that feel a little strange? Yeah. So that's gonna be it for today, you guys. I realized what time it was. My sister-in-law is actually here. Erin's sister is here playing with the kids today. Benjamin just kind of comes and goes as he wants to. She's in there with Samantha right now. Um, and I'm gonna utilize the rest of my couple of hours to go get the watering done in the greenhouse and water that big section of annuals by our chicken coop. So gotta get that done. We're supposed to get 100 degrees this next week. 
I, I mean, I'm ready for heat because it's gonna make everything explode growth-wise, but I'm not ready for the heat, if that makes sense. I love spring so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm hopefully gonna be getting the flower seeds in here in the next few days. That's, that's my goal anyway, because I only have, I've got, three long rows, so three 60 foot rows, and then just three part rows left to fill out here, and then it's done. And I think the tomatoes are gonna have to go somewhere else. We have so much space out here, I just figured I could just set up a little bit of drip tubing and just line the tomatoes up, and um, then we could just have like this huge section where I can just open it up for people to come in, my friends and family to come in and pick what they want, because, Oh, I don't need that many tomatoes, but it's so much fun. I, and I might even just let them grow. Like I may not even worry about pruning them. I'll just plant them and just come what may. Usually they produce fairly well anyway. Let's go. <laughs> you wanna go? Okay, thanks guys again for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Look how cleared out it is up here. I thought I'd come up here and we'll see what Aaron's doing. I thought he was just gonna spray the trees. Did you decide to do some in-ground stuff too? Yeah, I'm putting iron tone in the holes. So how deep are you going? <laughs> Pretty deep. <laughs> well, that's a big old auger right there. Yeah, so, okay, so this is the size of the auger. Uh-huh. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just gonna fill it up with iron tone. Is you are? Bad? Well, I don't think so. I think it's far, it's kind of far. I mean, well, I don't know. This tree has been in for how many years now? Two or three. Yeah, so it's its roots are probably out a bit. I just figure if I fill up the whole area with iron tone. Yeah, well, but I you sprayed this. Foliar, yeah. Okay. But I couldn't get all the way to the top with it. It's a it, pretty tall tree. It wouldn't spray all the way up. Look at that, you guys. But it's got this yellow cast. What's weird is that we've got red points right here that are gorgeous. And then we've got two of them that are like this right here. See that? Yellow leaf, uh, leaf tissue with green veining that is just like a classic iron deficiency problem. You should show them the maple tree up in the front. It's even worse than this it's one. Way worse. It's like sad. Like it might die worse. I don't know. Are you drilling well, holes in my flower beds? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are? <laughs> okay. I kind of made a little bit of a mess. You did? Well, just a little bit. I figured you were going to plant in that. <laughs> I got to go look. Okay. Well, here, let me, I'll show you what it looks like when I fill up the hole. Okay. So we decided to go ahead and clear out this flower bed too, because check this out. It's going to be way easier to design. In fact, you know, this tree, like you keep saying, this tree is not right. It's not in the right spot. Kind of not in the right spot. But we're going to want shade. We just got to like back up and figure out, I mean. Well, do you want to do the pathway right here? I don't know. Or do you want the pathway where you are? I feel like the pathway needs to come right through where the maple is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but having all of this stuff gone is really helpful. I think it opens the whole thing up. And honestly, like, I don't know how intricate I want to get, Erin. I just, I really want that park kind of yeah, right. vibe. And I want to be able to see and not like choke the view of the house. Right. I don't know. Anyway, that's not the point. I guess let's take a look at the iron tone. How many pounds of iron tone can one fit in a hole? I gotta spread it out between all my holes. I think I'll use the whole bag. 18 pounds? Yep. Dang. That's so much iron tone. If this tree doesn't green up, it has pounds. issues, bigger issues that we don't know about. I couldn't dig any holes on this side because there's the trench with all the electrical and oh, yeah. water and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go look at the front one. Okay. But look at this one. It is so, so yellow. It was doing this last year and we were not super diligent. We did some iron tone, but like not enough clearly. So I'm hoping that we can rectify this problem before it gets any worse and the tree starts to burn. Gardening always comes with its little trials, trying to figure out and troubleshoot problems in the garden. But you know what? That makes the successes all the more sweet.